First of all, welcome to Future Titan Day. Um, obviously, we're doing it differently than uh, we had originally intended um, with this virtual version, but um, you know, with, with everything going on, we're just really happy that we can still bring it to you um, in this way. And we're really hoping that uh, when it's time for you to make that decision, uh, this is helpful in narrowing things down. So thank you all for joining us uh, for new Titan Day. Uh, we're gonna give you a chance to ask questions on here uh, in the next few hours um, with our different presenters, um, our different people who will be taking over this Facebook Live. So uh, get your questions ready. Um, right now, if you're a prospective student uh, who's joining us or parent um, of a prospective student, uh, go ahead and drop your hometown uh, and your high school in the chat where you're from. Uh, just to kind of so we can get to know you before you get to know us a little bit. Um, I'm going to join back with you in a little bit um, later on after our presenters. Uh, but uh, it's been great to get to know you a little bit. Keep those comments coming. Um, but we're going to ask you to jump into the next live stream video. Um, it'll be Dr. Kathy Britton Richardson, the president uh, of Westminster College, with her official welcome uh, to Westminster for you guys. So thank you for joining us on New Titan Day. I'm done for now, but I'll be back later. So join us again uh, in our live stream. Uh, you'll find it right on Westminster College's uh, Facebook page. Uh, cool, great to talk to you and I'll talk to you again later. I'm Kathy Richardson, the president at Westminster College and it's my deep honor to offer a welcome to you today to this virtual new Titan at Day. The circumstances of the past few weeks have been extraordinary for us here at Westminster, as I'm sure they have been for you. And we're sorry that you couldn't come to campus today where we could welcome you in person. However, I'm grateful for this technology that allows us to talk together and to give you an opportunity to ask questions that you may have. Some of you may have had the opportunity to visit our campus before and to meet our wonderful faculty, staff, and students. If you have or haven't, I hope you took the opportunity this morning to take the virtual online tour um, because I think it provides a gorgeous look at the serene, calm beauty that surrounds us here on our campus. Had you been able to be with us physically today, you would have seen um, the steel beam box that's rising alongside our Hoyt Science Center that is the new wing that we're building that will construct a variety of new teaching labs and learning spaces. Across the street from that, you would see the site where we will soon begin construction of a new turf, uh, soccer and lacrosse field, a new softball field, and then down the street you would see the site where we're going to be building a new baseball field. Right now, all these projects are temporarily on hold because we are abiding by our state mandate to stop non-essential projects during this uh, pandemic crisis. But we look forward in the coming weeks to be able to start those projects so that our campus will be ready for you to join us in the fall. Our faculty have been working tremendously hard over the past few weeks, adjusting our teaching to this new reality of being online for the rest of this term. Even while we've been physically apart from our students though, our faculty have stayed in touch, teaching and mentoring and advising in dedicated ways. So have our staff, from our student affairs staff to our wonderful support staff and our student success center, to our IT staff. We've been working together to make sure that students have access to all the tools they need to go on with great learning. Our librarians have even opened up instant chats so that students who are working remotely on a paper and assignment can get help. While we're meeting these challenges of distance education, teaching and learning, frankly, we can't wait to resume our tradition of face-to-face -face instruction with our students. It's those uh, interactions and campus activities that make an education at Westminster so very real. But you know, through these days, I've been reminded what a powerful community we have here at Westminster. From my first visit to campus more than four years ago through this morning, I have been convinced that the greatest strength we have is what I call the we in Westminster. Since our visionary founding back in 1852, We've been a campus that welcomes all students. We invite them to come and develop their characteristics, competencies, and commitments to their highest levels. Becoming a Titan means becoming a part of that community. 20,000 alumni strong stretching across this country and around the globe. It's a community powered by effective teaching, 
uh, deep learning, great athletic competition, and wonderful artistic performances. Our community is sustained through deep friendships, supporting mentoring that last day after day, year after year, indeed decade after decade. That we in Westminster is durable, powerful, and very real. Well, I'm excited that you're planning to come join us at Westminster this fall. And over the next hour or so, we're gonna offer you a lot of information about that process. We will first hear from our Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students, Ms. Gina Vance. She's gonna talk with you about matriculation and all the services that Student Affairs provides. She'll be followed by our Vice President for Academic Affairs and Enrollment Management, Dr. Jeffrey Coker. He will talk with you about the enrollment process and academics here at Westminster. And then you're gonna hear back from our sophomore, Jack Carson, who is an interdisciplinary film studies major, great young student, and he's gonna give you the perspective of what it's like to be a student at Westminster. During each of these sections, we want you to be able to offer comments, post questions, to find out what you need to know as you finalize your plans about where you're going to attend college in the fall. I encourage you to um, be bold, ask those questions. We have a host of experts who are waiting to, to answer them for you. So now we're gonna take a brief pause and then Dean Vance is going to be online with you to talk with you about matriculation and student affairs. Please know how happy I am that you're considering Westminster for your college destination and how honored we would be if you choose to come join us. The we in Westminster will be stronger if you become a part of it. Thank you so much. My name is Gina Vance. I am the Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students at Westminster. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit this morning about next steps. Um, for your journey. So all of you have been admitted to Westminster, which is a great accomplishment. And so I want to start by saying congratulations. Um, so the very first thing that you need to do now that you have been admitted is to pay your deposit. Um, some of you have done that and others have not. And so we're really hoping that you'll take a moment and do that in the next day or two. And here's why. Once you pay your deposit, there's a lot of really wonderful things that happen next. Um, things like getting your schedule and getting your room and um, getting your email account. And so that has to, those are all sort of the next steps that happen after you pay your deposit. So go ahead and make that happen and then we can move on in the process. Um, so the, uh, after you pay your deposit, the, the next thing that will come your way is a series of, of tasks to complete. And you're gonna find these at westminster.edu slash checklist. Um, this is gonna require a login. So the very first thing that's gonna happen once you deposit is you're gonna get an email to the email address that we have been using all along in your admissions cycle. It's gonna contain instructions about how to set up your Westminster um, email account, you get your username, your login, and so on and so forth. And that network account is so critical. Um, it helps you get into all of our network resources, it helps you get into your email, um, and it helps you engage with us over the course of the summer to help get you ready for your time at Westminster. Um, let's see, when you, once you get your email address, you're gonna go to that checklist. Again, that's westminster.edu slash checklist. And you're gonna tell us that your email account is set up and when you do that, the first item on your checklist is the Establish Your Westminster Online Account. As soon as you tell us that um, that, that is working, you're gonna see a checkbox in that, in that particular checklist item. That's gonna open up your next checklist item, which is your course preference form. This is where you're gonna tell us information about you so we can help to build your schedule. Um, your schedule is gonna be built by a faculty member from your department or from the exploratory areas. Um, and they will be beginning that process on April 6th. So we're really right around the corner from that. And so getting this form filled out so that we have good information about you to make wise decisions about your first schedule is incredibly helpful. We're gonna ask you things about confirming your major. You may have applied six months ago and um, picked a major that now six months later you're thinking, no way, no how, that's not what I wanna do anymore. And so this gives you an opportunity to tell us a little bit more um, about the major or exploratory intentions that you might have. You're gonna tell us in this form about AP credits and 
transfer credits that you might be bringing in. Um, and those are helpful pieces of information while we're building your schedule. Um, and then as soon as we get your schedule built, again, starting next week, you will receive an email with instructions on how to access that schedule so you can see what classes we have um, created for you. Once you complete the course preference form, you're gonna get a checkbox on that checklist. And the next form that will open up for you is the residence life form. Again, this is an opportunity for you to share information with us about your room preferences and roommate information. Um, even if you plan to commute, you should intend to fill out this form. Um, this is a place where we do some verifying and some checking in. So if you tell us that you're going to commute, that's a confirmation there for us that we know that you're going to be commuting. If you're going to be living on campus with us, which should be the vast majority of you, um, we are gonna ask you some questions about roommate information. So one thing that you can do is um, tell us if you have a roommate that you've already identified and both of you just need to let us know who those roommates are and we'll make that match for you. You can tell us that you wanna live with a team member. Um, so somebody from, um, you know, if you're a soccer player, I heard lots of soccer players in there this morning. If you're a soccer player and you wanna live with another soccer player, you have the opportunity to tell us that on this form. And if you don't have a roommate and you don't know who you want to live with, that's fine too. There's lots of other questions that we will use then to help make some good matches for you. So take a deep breath. Um, if you are an early decision person, you will have your housing assignment by June 1st. If you are not an early decision person and you're making your deposit anytime in the near future, you'll have your housing assignment by June 15th. Again, this will come to you in an email with instructions on where you can find that information on our um, internet or on our internet called My Westminster. Once you complete the residence life form, that's gonna show a checkbox on your checklist. And the next one we come to are health forms. Um, health forms are a little bit different in that the physical health forms are mailed to your home just, just after you deposit. Um, those physical health forms go to your home address um, and they are, include forms like immunization records and a physical for, from your doctor and, and other kinds of health related forms. There are instructions in the online checklist about how to upload all of that and create a health, a student health portal for yourself, an account for yourself in our student health portal. Um, and it's really important that you do that. The director of our wellness center comes through each and every one of the health records individually over the course of the summer. And she will notify you of missing pieces, parts that you might have along the way. Once she has the full and complete packet of health forms, then she will go in and check the health forms box for you. So over the summer, as you're monitoring your checklist and you see that it hasn't been checked, you might want to check your email because there's probably a communication in there from you about or for, from our director um, about what might be missing. And I will say this to our parents and families that are out there. Um, I know how infrequently my teenagers communicate with me about things that they've heard from school. So I'm gonna say this to students and highly recommend that if you don't understand the information that your our health center director is sending to you in your email about what might be missing, make sure you pass that information along to your family members so they can help you get the information in the forms that you need in um, on time. Those health forms are due June 15th. Um, those of you who are athletes, please note that the health forms that we're talking about in this checklist are for general health forms for all students. Athletes will have a different set of forms required for them, um, and those will be communicated to you through the athletic department over the course of the summer. So when you get that second email from an athletic person don't, or your coach, please don't be surprised um, because there are two sets of, of medical information for, for athletic students. That's the first set of checklist items, and those are all out there and available for you now. Um, later in the summer, somewhere around July 1st, we will publish a second set of checklists. And that checklist set will have things that are more relevant to you at that time. One is our summer reading. We do require all of our first year students to do a summer reading and write an essay prior to their arrival on campus. So the instructions will be in that second checklist. We also require our students to um, complete an online module for sexual violence prevention education and alcohol education, two very important topics that we take very seriously here at Westminster. And that will come out in the second checklist, the instructions for that will come out in the second checklist as well. The third item on that particular checklist is parking. So as once you get your housing assignments and we move later on into the summer, 
um, you'll be able to register for your parking pass, pay for that parking pass, and then pick it up when you arrive on campus. Um, so that's lots of online work for you to do over the summer. The new student checklist, again, is the place for you to check all of that information out. But there's another really helpful web resources that I do want to tell you about, and it's um, westminster.edu slash westminsterbound. Again, that's westminster.edu slash westminsterbound. This page has lots and lots of really important information for first year students and their families. It can answer a lot of questions that you might have along the summer, like things to bring to campus and how to pack, or um, information about orientation dates, or what you can get involved in, or what common transition things you might expect in the coming months. Um, that web page is also then created. We create a print piece that we will be mailing out in the hand, in the next few weeks here. Um, and so please expect that to be coming in the mail as well. That print piece is intended for both students and their families. So this is a piece that we hope that you will open up together, that you'll walk through together, that you will find useful over the next coming days and months as you prepare. Um, we have some new events, not new events, but some additional events, your next events to come to campus and, and, and meet us. And we hope that we will be able to do these live. Um, so right now I'm gonna tell you the tentative dates. Those are called Westminster Bound events. Um, and the tentative dates for those are May 15th, June 12th, and July 10th. As you all know, we are living in a little bit of a different world right now. And so while those are tentative dates, we're also actively working on plans to bring that material to you in an online format should we need to. Um, the purpose of that day is to get some timely and more relevant information in your process over the summer that's even more relevant than what where you are today. Um, specifically in the afternoon, we have a create your own time. So we encourage you to visit people on campus who can help you get set up for the fall, including faculty who might be able to make adjustments to your schedule, health center offices, athletic um, trainers for forms and so on and so forth. So it is a really, really important event for us. And we love to get you connected one on one with the, with the people that you need to contact to make sure you feel very ready to arrive in August. Um, last piece about our first year um, summer and, and arrival to your next experience is our orientation dates, which are August 28th through 30th. So make a note of those. All first year students will be expected to attend our orientation. We have a wonderful, rich program filled with lots of good educational material and fun interactive moments as well. Jack, who you've already met and who you will talk with in a little bit, is an orientation leader and um, he's a wonderful asset as all our orientation leaders are to that program. Last thing that I would like to um, just kind of mention for you is that um, I, I oversee all of the student affairs areas on campus. And um, I know that there are lots of questions coming in the comments. I hope that I can keep up with all of them. Um, so I'll try to do that in just a moment here. But if you have questions that fall in the, the areas of residence life, so campus housing, wellness, or health services, counseling services, sexual violence prevention, um, public safety, our diversity and inclusion area, um, student engagement or disability resources, I'm happy to entertain those this morning um, and so I just want to thank you so much for your time so give me a minute here to kind of comb through questions will I not get my room assignment if my health nope you'll get your room assignment if your health forms on it so um, really your health forms are due June 15th but they don't hold you back from getting any of the summer things that we've talked about so you'll get your schedule you will definitely get um, your housing assignment and all of the information that you need over the course of the summer. So we don't want that health forms to necessarily get in the way. Um, someone asked when you'll get your academic schedule. So that we the, the faculty will begin building first year student schedules on April 6th. Um, but we have to have that course preference form in in order for us to be able to build that schedule. So it's kind of dependent a little bit on you. If you get that form in to us, then we'll begin building them on April 6th and you can get them as soon as possible after that. Um, but if you take until May 15th to do that academic, to do that schedule, then it, it will be a little bit later. Um, how are rooms and roommates picked? Um, we use that roommate preference form. Tell us um, a lot about yourself so that we can make some matches, things that you have in common, um, so that we um, so that we can tell a little bit about you. We do tend to. Um, 
try to make matches. We start with people who already know they want to make matches. We try to listen to what you're telling us in terms of wanting to live with athletes and so on and so forth. And so we'll make those matches first um, and then we'll match the rest of the folks um, together. We do really like to have as much information in from everyone as possible because it helps us have more options and choices to make good matches along the way. And then first year students will live in Shaw and Galbraith, Russell, and first year women who want single gender housing can live in Brown. Are there anything other than double rooms? There are not. We do ask that all of our first year students live in double rooms. The reason for that is we believe very much in the learning process and the educational process of our residential experience. Um, it is how we define ourselves as an institution. It is an incredibly valuable part of your learning and your education. It is uncomfortable sometimes and it might be a challenge, but please understand that we will walk that, through that with you and work with you along the way. Um, but yes, double rooms are where we put our first year students. How do the fellowship program work? That's a great question. Thank you so much for asking that one. Um, for the fellows folks, um, you will be housed on a floor with the rest of your fellows program and we know who you are. Admissions provides us that information. So we will take the information you share with us on your roommate preference form about things that your interests and things that you have in common with another fellows person to make that match but you will all live on a single floor together that's part of the living learning experience um, is to house you all in one space together so thank you for that question um, do we get to apply for a residence hall on the form you can make a note if there's a particular residence hall that you're very interested in um, so please make sure that you do that um, the next question is what does Westminster offer for mental health services and so um, we all of our mental health and health services are housed in what we call our wellness center. Um, mental health services, we have one full-time counselor and a half-time counselor on campus. Um, right now, I'm so proud of those folks because they have very quickly moved to telecounseling for our current students and they've been wonderful in continuing ongoing care for those students. Um, we do, they are here 8.30 to 4.30 Monday through Friday um, and students can, have, can set up sessions. That is covered as part of your tuition expenses so that is not um, an additional expense for you and I would highly encourage students who have sought counselors in the past or who might think they need it through the transition process in your first fall semester to take advantage of our mental health counseling services. Um, can we have a preference on which dorms we get assigned? Yep, so make sure that you note that on your roommate preference form. Um, is it possible to get back into the form? It is not possible to get back into the form after it has been submitted. So here's what I'm gonna ask you to do. I'm gonna ask you if you have a change to that form. Um, so you've learned something today and you've already submitted the form and you wanna make a change. Email residencelife at westminster.edu. That is R-E-S-I-D-E-N-C-E. L-I-F-E at westminster.edu. Um, you'll need to let us know in that email the change that you want to make to your form. Do soccer players and fall athletes have to come early? If so, when and how do you go about that? It's a great question. Yes, um, fall athletes, so soccer, football, volleyball, tennis, cross country, and maybe golf, did I get everyone? Um, will come back early. Your coaches will contact you with that specific information. So um, football tends to be our first group back and they tend to come around the second week of August. Everybody else sort of follows in a handful of days after that. Marching band folks, you also will come back early and anyone who's part of our cheerleading squad will come back early as well. Um, so you, you will come back early. You will move into your actual residence hall assignment and that's where you will live. Um, and your teams will make arrangements for you to be fed during that time. So your meal plan doesn't actually begin until the semester starts, um, you, but we will feed you, of course, while you're here on campus. So you'll move into your traditionally assigned room. We will feed you during that time and you'll get specific move-in information, communication about that directly from your coach or uh, Dr. Tad Gregg. So absolutely, there's a question in here about the fact that um, doctor's offices right now are not scheduling physicals and because of the pandemic. And so can there be an extension to that June 15th deadline? We're gonna leave that June 15th deadline out there as a posted deadline, but absolutely we will work with you. We will be flexible with you. And as I talk with the wellness director and we see how the summer pans out, um, if we need to change that sort of more formally, we'll go ahead and change that. But yes, absolutely. Just keep in communication with us so we know um, what you're thinking about. Can you tell us a little bit about public safety um, and how that works? Absolutely. So we have a public safety staff. Um, Osmond Mberry is the director of our public safety and he is a wonderful, wonderful 
addition to, um, to our campus. Um, we do what we call a community, um, a, a, sorry, a community public safety model, and that is that Osmond spends a lot of time getting to know our students, um, eating with them and being with them and coming to their events in the evenings and working with them so that when there is an issue on campus, he is really familiar with who our students are um, and is able to help them very quickly. We do have staff on campus 24 seven. In fact, even though we are closed at the moment, they are our essential staff and they are um, staffing the campus all the time now and um, in making sure that things are safe. And so they are very responsive to students um, and, and available. So maybe this might be the last question that I take. Um, and that is uh, Greek life involvement on campus. Um, and kind of talk a little bit about that. Absolutely, we have um, five national sororities and four national fraternities on our campus. Um, Recruitment for the primary recruitment season for each of those, um, for both sets of organizations is in January of your first year. So over the course of the fall semester, you will have an opportunity to um, engage with our Greek community, to work with our Greek community, to get to know members of our different chapters um, and, to, um, and to, to begin to understand a little bit about that process more. And then in January, you have the opportunity to participate in a formal recruitment period and, and pick up as a member if you're interested in doing that. Um, our fraternities and sororities are very involved um, on campus. They do a lot of programming, um, both socially and educationally on their own, as well as philanthropically um, throughout our community and in, in, in connection with their national organizations. Um, I would say that they are one really meaningful part of a larger idea of being involved on campus. We have 80 student organizations um, that are uh, available to you from, with a wide variety of interests from things like um, gaming to fencing to academic clubs um, and honor societies. And so there's a wide variety of opportunities for you to be involved in clubs and organizations on campus. Um, I think at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over um, to Dr. Coker, um, who's gonna talk with you more about um, the academic and enrollment pieces of our campus. It has been so great to be with you this morning. Um, thank you so, so much for the questions. And um, please feel free to reach out to us if you've got additional questions that I wasn't able to get to today. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay well, stay healthy. My name is Jeffrey Coker. I'm the um, academic Dean and Vice President for Academic Affairs and Enrollment. It's really exciting to be here with you today, uh, digitally that is. My session is 95% questions, so our questions and answers. So feel free to go ahead and send those in at any time and um, with my wife's help to, to feed questions so you don't have to watch me read, uh, I'll, I'll address anything that you want to talk about related to academics, academic support, um, admissions, enrollment, um, and, and financial aid as well. We have some great experts in the, um, who are going to be contributing in the, um, in the written comments, including our registrar, Scott Wignall, uh, our director of financial aid, Cheryl Gerber, our associate dean and, uh, and master of all things, Jamie McMinn, um, our dean of the faculty <clears throat> and professor of chemistry, Pete Smith, and of course, all of our wonderful admissions counselors. Um, as well as a lot of others, but they're the ones that are that are teed up for this particular session. I think that um, I can't wait for you to, those of you that haven't been able to, to actually make it to campus, I can't wait for you to meet our community in person. It is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful community. Um, one one uh, statistic I often like to cite or uh, um, is that our seniors in, in recent years have taken a survey called the National Survey of Student Engagement. And one of the outcomes of that is that it has shown that, that the student-faculty interactions on our campus uh, place us easily within the top 5% of colleges nationally um, based on senior responses of colleges across the country. And that's just a testament to the relationships that Westminster um, community members have with each other. And you'll feel, I hope you'll be able to feel a little bit of that in, in this session today, but of course not, not nearly so much as it will be when, when we all come together. Um, at, at later dates um, as we're able. Uh, one other thing while we're waiting for, for more questions to come in, just to follow up on what Jean Van, uh, Dean Vance said about deposits. 
Um, so if you go to the, you look on the main West, Westminster website, up at the top is the deposit button. And if, the advantage of going ahead, going ahead and depositing is it allows us to, to, to flip the switch and allow all of our support resources to go ahead and start helping you now. So starting within the next week, week and a half, we're gonna go ahead and start building student schedules. And then a, a, you know, a set of things start happening after that in terms of uh, roommates and all that. So the, the earlier you deposit, the more we can get you into, or the quicker we can get you into classes and just start to get it, um, get your life set up and, and stress-free at that point. So I hope that you'll, you'll go ahead and do that. I think about two thirds of you ha have already done that, so great. We'll continue working forward and, and the other third, whenever you're ready, we're, we're ready to, um, to, to take off. Um, a couple of other things while we're building up some questions. Um, a small handful of, of those watching today are, are in late applicant stage. So we're, we're still awaiting some piece of information like a transcript or test scores or what have you. Just a quick word that those of, those of you that are in that, that situation, we understand that there's a lot of things going on right now that are not your fault. So if, if your high school isn't able to, to release transcripts right now, that's perfectly fine. You can just take a picture of a report card or anything that, that uh, gives us that basic information. Uh, we will work with you. Same thing with test scores. We know that the test centers are shut down in most cases and, and so forth. So just communicate with your counselors about what it is, what obstacle you're facing, and we will do everything that we can to work through those, um, those things with you. Uh, these are not particularly normal times, and we understand that. And, and if there are any barriers for you, then we'll, we'll simply remove the barriers. We want, we want to be as, um, as, make things as easy for you, for you as we can. And the last thing that I'll say before uh, starting with questions is um, if you're in a, you know, the economy, it's a volatile time in terms of, in terms of economics across the country. We all understand that. So it's to be expected that we'll have, um, we'll have as we have every year, uh, families who have job loss or, or something like that. Please know that we're gonna work with you in every possible way, whenever, um, if and when such things happen. Our financial aid office, is, as soon as, um, a, if a parent were to um, have a, a job loss, there's a, you can file a change of circumstances form, um, and then that sets off uh, a financial aid process that, that we can reconfigure your financial aid package to, to suit your needs. So there's no situation where um, where you, we would not be able to, to work it out. So please know, I hope that will take some stress off um, because I know, I know that it's a volatile time. Our director of financial aid, uh, Cheryl Gerber, um, the other um, financial aid officers and Regine King and the others and, and financial aid are, are fantastic to work with. And I think will support you in every way that they can. So um, there was a question about, about honors. The, the, um, our honors director is Christiane Collada. There, um, there are requirements for that related to, to GPA and to, um, and to test scores. I believe the, um, I think it's 1300 SAT and um, 3.8, something like that GPA. But if, if your honor is eligible, then, then uh, the director of the honors program will, will reach out to you. Um, as an incoming student. And then once you're at Westminster, there's also the possibility for, for lateral entry into the honors program. So it happens every year that, that um, some, some stellar students are, um, you know, perform really well in the first semester and then elect to, to join the, the honors program at that point. So there's several entry points. Uh, so I hope that'll, that will help. So we've got a lot of questions about, about credit transfer. Uh, the blanket answer to all of them, uh, to well, to most of them is yes. So I'll start with AP. If you look on the registrar's website, there is a link right on the front of the website to our AP, um, our AP test policy, and it'll show you exactly for what test, what score you have to make to, to get out, uh, to uh, satisfy which of our classes. But we do accept AP, um, International Baccalaureate, and all, the, all those types of things. Uh, we do accept or if you've been in um, dual enrollment classes, early college, college in the high school, all the, we, as long as it was done through an accredited 
um, college or university and, is and it shows up on a college transcript, then we would accept that, um, we would accept those as, as uh, normal credit. Uh, some of, there are some transfer students in the, in, um, out there today. We're really glad that you're joining us as well. Um, we have, um, so uh, there's a, a table on the, in the registrar's website that for, for many schools that are common, um, students commonly transfer from to get to us, there's, it'll, uh, there's some information there about which classes transfer for what. But at the point that you sit down with our registrar, he will map all, they will map all that out for you. And of course, we, we accept uh, transfer credit. It's just a matter of, of figuring out which classes fit for what. And, and we can, we're ha very happy to work through that with you on an individual basis. That, uh, one thing I'll say while we're waiting for more questions is um, it, it's ironic in, in the coronavirus era in many ways, but, but uh, I think you'll, you'll love the academic environment at Westminster in terms of how the, how the classroom environment interfaces with experiential learning. So our students are doing research and they're doing internships and, and doing community service, um, travel courses, study abroad, all those kinds of things. It's a wonderful, wonderful set of experiences that, that I think that you'll, um, uh, I, I think Westminster education is, is uh, powerful and it's also fun. So I, I hope that you'll, you'll look forward to that. Jen, uh, so there was a question about being exploratory. So when we say exploratory, the exploratory designation is uh, a Westminster's phrase for undecided students. So if you come unsure of what you want to major in, then we call you exploratory. And, um, you know, I, I think this is one of Westminster's strengths of, of um, helping people to discover what it is that, that you really want to do. And that might be, you know, if you're torn between two disciplines that are, that are closely related, or even if you just have no idea of what you want to major in. Um, exploratory majors will, are, um, their advising, advisement is coordinated through our Academic Success Center. Uh, Jessica Schellenberger is, is uh, wonderful and, and makes sure that, that exploratory majors um, have good advising and, and are on track to graduate in four years, um, irregardless of what they ultimately decide to major in. Um, there's also a first year course called Westminster 101 that every Westminster student takes that um, will also uh, you know, have some elements that will sort of help you find your way on campus in terms of, in terms of majors, in terms of, of um, getting basic stuff done, like, like uh, registering for classes and, and those sorts of things. Um, so that's, that's what explore, being exploratory means. There's also an interdisciplinary major and uh, Jack Carson, our uh, sophomore student that you met earlier, and, and we'll, um, you'll see again here in a few minutes, he's a good example of that. He's an inter interdisciplinary major. That's an opportunity to take, uh, basically to create your own, your own major um, with the close mentoring of a, of a small team of faculty around um, different things that, that you might be interested in. So we've had students to, to blend um, business and, and the environment. Um, uh, Jack is a good, good example of, of blending communication and film. Um, and there's, there's lots of other really interesting combinations. So that's a great opportunity. Okay, there was a question about when do our students um, choose a major and then how, how would one change it later? So you're welcome to, to declare a major as soon as you get on campus. And in fact, for, for many of you, you um, on, the, on the forms that you'll fill out after depositing, we'll get an idea of what, of what you want to major in. Um, if we, as soon as we know, you'll get an advisor that is in that, that area um, so that you can get connected with, the, with that department, with that community as quickly, um, as, quickly as, as we can get you set up. But you're welcome to declare really at any time. Um, as far as how you, switching is a, a literally a three minute process. Uh, there's, a, there's a registrar's office form in order to, to switch majors. I think it's good advice to, to declare, you know, to try something out. If, even if you're not sure, if you go ahead and let us know what you think you might be interested in, you can go ahead and get connected, see if that feels right, and then and then we can switch you just like um, at the drop of a hat if, if you realize that's not right for you. Um, I think it's 
a very good idea for students to, to try to pick a major by the end of your first year. Um, some students need a little bit longer than that. Um, but to, to try to help you to graduate in four years, the, you know, I, I'd say the, the sooner the better, but, but really, you know, I think um, probably about a third of Westminster students either come in um, as an exploratory or will change majors uh, once they get here. So, so changing is normal, not being sure is normal, and, but I, I'd say within the first uh, year, year and a half, you should probably have figured that out. There are a couple of disciplines where it's, it's, um, it's really, really advantageous um, to know before you arrive. And so the, the big uh, one example of that is nursing. So you don't want to, if you, if you decide to be a nurse as a, at the end of your first year, then it's probably going to take you longer than four years to graduate because of how that program's built. But that's an exception um, for, the, for nearly all of our other majors. Uh, you'll easily graduate in four years as long as you decide really any time in your first year. So I, I think we have questions about, about study abroad. Um, study abroad is wonderful. Over the last several years, our, our students have gone to um, more than 35 different countries around the world. So really the only criteria, we can, we can arrange for you to study abroad practically anywhere as long as it's safe. Um, you know, if the, if the Department of State um, indicates that it's safe for you to go somewhere and they have, they have universities, then, uh, then we, can, we can likely arrange for you to, to study abroad there. We have both, uh, both our own programs that, that travel with entirely Westminster students and Westminster faculty, and then we have affiliate relationships with, uh, with, other, with other schools around the world, other programs around the world. So between those two, that gives you access to the whole globe. Uh, Westminster programs that have been, uh, you know, with Westminster uh, students and faculty over the last two or three years have included uh, programs to to Dominican Republic. Um, there's one um, to Italy. We have a, a long-standing program that go, a semester program that goes to London. Um, our honor students go to Greece. Um, Let's see, where else? There are um, numerous places in South America. Our, our, our biology faculty have, have often led, um, led more biological type study abroad programs um, down to, to South America. And then we're, there are a number of, of programs in development. Uh, there's one that goes up to, um, to different places in, in Canada to explore um, a, a variety of things. But the, the bottom line answer is that, that you can go practically anywhere. We have a uh, center for global education that's great. Uh, Mike Alapretti, a political science professor, is the, is the director of that. And so he can sit down and, and work through uh, whatever your study abroad objectives are, then we can, we can work it out. So th there was a question about, about internships and this question um, noted history majors in particular. That's a great question. Um, we have, so we have, a uh, center for um, a professional development center, what we call the PDC, um, right as you walk into McKelvey, and they will help um, help you to find internships, to find employment, help you with resumes, um, do uh, um, alumni networking, all sorts of great resources for finding internships and ultimately uh, finding employment and, and being successful uh, professionally after you leave Westminster. Um, our, our students internship all over the place. And what's, what's really powerful about, one of the many powerful things about a Westminster education is that students from all disciplines can go into practically um, every industry and be successful. So for a history major, for example, uh, some history majors may want something that's closely aligned with, with the study of history. And for students like that, you know, there, there's a range of, of opportunities for them. But we also have um, we also have alumni from from history, from English, from philosophy, and and, uh, and really every discipline across campus that will go into to um, the corporate America in, in all sorts of roles, all the way up to uh, to VPs and presidents and CEOs of, of companies that take their their um, their liberal arts education and then go apply it in in uh, companies and, and organizations all over the world. Um, but our internship network 
and our and our um, alumni network for for helping our current students is is um, off the charts outstanding. Um, every every uh, fall, we have a, an event that was started by alumni um, and and now continues to be one of our best campus traditions uh, called the Professional Networking Symposium. This is an opportunity for our current students to uh, to engage with with alumni, both both alumni and so there's um, there are talks and advice exchanged, um, and it's also there's an employment fair that allows um, allows people to come together. But I, I can't say enough about the the strength of our alumni at helping students to find internships and to and to to uh, to find employment later. So there's lots of opportunity. Uh, there have been a lot of questions about fellows. I'll start with, with the fellows program because we mentioned honors a little while ago. Um, the fellows program is, a, I think it's a really exciting way to, to start college. Um, if you're in, we have four fellows programs, the global engagement fellows, the civic engagement, leadership, and sustainability. And so if you're in a fellows program, then you're interested in, in the theme of that fellows program. You take a course together with that group. So every Westminster student takes a course called Inquiry in their first year. So let's just say, for example, that, that you're in the Global Engagement Fellows. Then you would take Inquiry as a, as a cohort with your Global Engagement Fellows, which would build in the Global Engagement theme. And then out of class, uh, Global Engagement is taught by um, Dr. Alapretti, who's also the, the director of our Global Education uh, Center. And, and so there'd be both in-class and out-of-class things that you would do around that topic um, as a cohort. If you're in a fellows program, all the fellows of a particular program um, live in the same building. So if you're a fellow, you're committing to be a, being a residential student and living on campus, um, and you would live together in the same building. It doesn't necessarily mean that you have to room with a fellow, but at least be in the same, in the same building so it's easy to, uh, to engage. So it's a, it's a form of learning community. Um, first year fellows programs, uh, you, you get an extra thousand dollars for being a part of that. I hope that somebody will post the link to the uh, to the fellows program down in the comments. Mm -hmm. And um, and the first year fellows, as the name suggests, only lasts for the first for the first year. So it's sort of a, 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 a ex exclusively first year program. The honors program. Um, the Honors Program is a four-year program, and there's a set of, of classes and experience, experiences associated with that that you can find on the Honors webpage um, that culm culminates in a research project as once you get to be a senior. One of the distinctive elements of our Honors Program is that um, students go to um, have a, a travel program, typically to Greece. Um, at the end of the first year that relates to the studies, of, to the classes that honor students have taken in the first year. Um, so whether you choose an honor, uh, the honors program or, or one of our four fellows programs, they're all, to be honest with you, they're all great, taught by uh, some of Westminster's best faculty. And I, yeah, I would strongly encourage, if, if you haven't um, thought about it, it's worth thinking about it. I think we have, um, we have a few spots left in in both honors and fellows, uh, but I think the, the spots are filling up quick. <laughs> so if you're interested in those, then you should you should apply pretty soon. There's a question about how does Westminster support um, first year students academically? That's a, a great question and really important. Um, you know, it, it's nor it's normal. There, there's a big transition there between um, between high school to college, and so we think a lot. For the for the we want our students to be successful, and we think a lot about how to make the the best transition, both socially and um, and in terms of academic um, preparedness in that um, in that first year, first semester, and first year. So, one I, I mentioned before that there's a Westminster 101 class. I think that that helps to get stu students oriented to campus to to figure out where the resources are and so forth. Um, so that's one really important piece is that Westminster 101 class. Every student has a faculty faculty member who's their academic advisor from the very beginning. Um, so that is a that's a support resource for for every student. That's that's very important. Our faculty are, are amazingly open and and ready to to step in and, and uh, support students however they can. 
We also have um, on the top of on the fourth floor of Thompson Clark, we have an outstanding academic success center. Um, our academic success center supports uh, they, they facilitate a tutoring program that's very well um, used across campus. Um, help with writing, um, really any sub academic support. That they, they run workshops for how to study and how to how to do different things. So our academic success center is really a great resource. I often, uh, every now and then, I'll, I'll slip up there, uh, seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, just to see what's going on. And typically, what you see is a, a, a dozen, fifteen students all sitting around uh, the, the tables and the rooms associated with the success center. And, and you see the tutoring, and you see the studying, and you see the, the um, you see students supporting other students. Um, so all that, all those resources together, um, I think, create a really good sort of community network to support our first year students. That's the, and, and this is one of the reasons that our retention rates have been have been really good, and, and our students, um, yeah, overwhelmingly return for their second year because they've been able to be successful. There was a question about uh, what are cluster courses. Cluster courses are part of our, our general education program, uh, what's called the Westminster Plan. It's one of our distinctive elements. So sometime, uh, you won't do this in your first year, but, but before you graduate, you'll take a cluster of two courses um, together. And the two courses will be um, around some interdisciplinary theme, but the two courses are from two different disciplines. Um, so there was there was one this um, there there've been lots of, of amazing examples of blending you know philosophy and physics or um, biology and and something from the social sciences um, they, they tend to be really creative and really fun um, and uh, but but it's a um, require one of the interdisciplinary requirements of our um, Westminster plan the our general education program. Uh, there was a question about declaring a double major. So, um, you know, the, the opportunities are, are endless. You can have two majors, you can have two degrees, you can have a major and a minor, a major and two minors. Uh, so th there's, there's a lot of opportunity. But in, in your first year, your primary concern should probably be declaring a major. Um, but if you decide to declare a double major, then you can do that. Um, you can do that through the registrar's office so that they're, they're aware of, of what you're what you're trying to do, um, but you can do that um, really at any time once you step on campus. Um, you can um, sign up for both, and then but you have a you know a primary um, advisor in one, and then uh, the faculty and the other and the other major would still help support and advise you to so that you can satisfy the requirements of both. So there was a question about about scholarship scholarship programs to study abroad or, or work study abroad and that that sort of thing. Um, I, I would, generally speaking, I would, um, I'd say set up an appointment with um, with our director of global education, Mike Alapretti, um, and or um, our financial aid office to talk about the different, um, you know, how to make study abroad affordable. We have tried really hard over the last year to to create relationships that that allow students to go abroad, out of um, at very affordable um, rates, both for short-term programs and for uh, semester-long programs. Um, so that's something that we've put a lot of thought into. But it, but it really depends on the on the, the program and where you're going, how the how the fi finances work out. But please know that we we make every effort to make them afford. Our, our study abroad opportunities tend to be uh, quite a bit less expensive than you'll find at a lot of at a lot of schools because that that plot went into it. I think that might that might have come to the end of the questions. If you have any other questions um, for for me or for academics, feel free to reach out. You're you're more than welcome to, to email me, um, Coker C O K E R J S at Westminster.edu. Uh, give me a call. Whatever whatever I can do to help, I'm very happy to do it. Um, thanks so much for joining us. I, I'm I can't wait to meet uh, to meet those of you that I haven't met already in person. Um, I'm very excited for the fall and the class that we've got coming in. This concludes my session, so I'm gonna, we're gonna cut off now. In just a minute, you're, you're gonna see Jack Carson again. Jack is fantastic, um, as you've already seen. Uh, he's just one of our many fantastic students, and he's gonna talk about um, student life here. Um, feel free to ask all of your, your sort of student 
culture student life oriented uh, questions to Jack and he'll give you uh, good, honest answers. Have a great rest of your day. Um, I would like to remind you real quick as well, um, just three reminders and, I, and I'll talk about this again. You know, submit your deposit today if you haven't. Um, that's the link has been in there. Um, join the class of 2024 Facebook page. Um, that's going to be a great way for you to connect with uh, all your future classmates. They're going to be professors in there as well. Um, so join that. You should have an invite or, um, or we can get you set up with that if you have questions. Um, and if you have any other questions, just please email any of us admissions counselors, anything. Um, but I do see questions coming in now. Um, so excuse me, sorry, my fingers all over my camera. I'm just trying to get as many as I possibly can. The first one from Katie Fitzpatrick. How is the food on campus? That's a hot button issue, uh, Katie. Personally, I really enjoy the food on campus. Um, for the most part, we have our two uh, main dining halls. We have the tub, which is kind of grab and go style. Um, there's hot food offered there during certain hours. Um, uh, and then there's always the, uh, an option for what's called Sammy sandwiches, which is kind of Subway, but there's the grill, which is kind of, you know, burgers, fries, that kind of thing. Um, there are salads there um, going on all day. And um, then we have, and, I mean, there are snacks too as well. There are desserts and things. Um, my favorite meal on all of campus is the tub peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, it's just different, so much better. Uh, but then we have Galbraith Dining across the quad, which is more your buffet style. It's kind of an all you care to eat. Um, sort of dining hall and when I can get over there that's what I prefer um, if you have more questions about dining let me know but personally I like it uh, I think a lot of people gripe about it but that's because uh, a lot of people gripe about college food in general I mean it's not you know it's not gourmet but there are some times that there are some really good meals um, second favorite is tub pierogies are really good let's see we'll keep going how do I feel Westminster prepared for a career after college um, I think very well um, Honestly, uh, and, and I'll get into my background and I'll kind of address that more, um, but I know Dean Coker and others uh, address the Professional Development Center, the PDC, um, that we have on campus. And that's, if you've heard of like career centers and places on college campuses, that's what that is. It's setting you up with resources to prepare for job interviews, prepare for internship searches and things like that. Uh, I used it to get my resume together and that resume has led me to, I had an internship this past fall. And again, I'm just in my sophomore year, so. Um, I'm already collecting internships. Uh, I just submitted a video interview for an internship uh, literally two days ago um, for an internship in California. So I'll get more into that uh, more, but overall, Westminster's been there to answer all my questions um, that I have about the next step in getting a career and what I eventually want down the road and how I can tailor my curriculum uh, for that. Let's see. How hard are classes compared to high school? Um, well, something I found, uh, Kaylee, who asked this question, um, yeah, they're, they're, they're harder. This is the next step. This is, you know, part of that maturation process where it, you have to take the harder classes. But I was a worse student in high school than I am in college. Um, this process in college is something that, you know, I'm far more, I'm more fond of. It's me doing something that I really enjoy, um, whether it's my major classes or just general classes that we have to take for the liberal arts. Um, I feel more invested and that helps you know the process be a lot easier I, I won't lie I I'll say it's it's more challenging uh, but it's far more rewarding as well because you really you get a sense that you're getting a more whole education than in high school at least in my experience um, my GPA in college is much higher than my high school GPA but that's just my personal experience um, let's see uh, I'm gonna skip over a couple of these because I think I'm gonna address them in my in my background um, equestrian club how do you go about getting in that um, I don't know who the advisor is for that, but I do. I actually had a couple friends who participated in one of their events, I think last year. Um, talked to Dean Vance, Gina Vance, who was on uh, just a couple minutes ago. She can set you up with whoever the advisor is for that, the president for that organization. Um, if you have questions about student organizations, that's the person. Uh, I mean, well, student affairs in general, student affairs email. Someone can drop that down in the comments. Uh, that's where you want to go for those kind of questions. Anything about student engagement. Um, job opportunities um, and please financial aid um, anybody else who can offer information on this please drop it in the comments my experience is um, I work in marketing right now and that's um, how we make those social media shows that's what everybody's saying jack-in-the-box for um, again I'll touch more on that okay I'm gonna skip over the questions for now I'll go back to that but let me just give you a bit about my background maybe I'll answer some of those questions inadvertently and if not please comment them again when I'm done so that I see them um, so, as I said before, um, I grew up in New Wilmington, which is the same small town that uh, Westminster is in. Uh, 
it's some people in my high school said it's 13th grade and I kind of worried about that going in that maybe I would be having the same experience um, since I live literally down the street from the college. Um, but I remember distinctly walking onto campus, um, first day of orientation, uh, I left to get lunch and I came back and I realized, wow, this is two different worlds. And that's been the absolute same for me since. It's been a completely different experience. Uh, I've been able to get involved in so many different things. Uh, when I came in as a freshman, I was a broadcasting major. And the broadcasting department is phenomenal at Westminster. Um, now I'm still doing uh, some things with the broadcasting department, uh, but I would do things like sports announcing. I'd try to announce all the football games and basketball games and things like that. Uh, live news, um, th that's a lot of what the broadcasting department did. And that was an opportunity for me to get involved right away, right off the bat, um, and as, you know, as much as I possibly could. Uh, I realized, I think, at the end of my first year and kind of uh, second semester this year uh, that I wanted to take a different route with it and focus more on film and television. So I kept some of those uh, elements of broadcasting and production and combined and communication and combined that with our film studies minor and what Dean Coker was talking about earlier, which is an interdisciplinary major, which is a way to create your own major. So. A lot of people come in exploratory, a lot of people come in you know, just not knowing exactly what they want to do or maybe what they want to do isn't specifically offered. Um, for me, I was able to combine two majors and uh, get a really personalized education out of that where I'm now studying, I, it's called film and media relations where it's a combination of those two disciplines. Um, and I'm getting something that's really tailored for me. Um, let me think about some other things that I've done on campus. Uh, I'm the president of Ultimate Frisbee Club, so when you come to campus and it's warm out, Frisbee at four every day at Ike Field. Uh, go to the student activities fair when you get to campus uh, for more on that. Um, that's another cheap plug for me. Um, Josie's talking about the whole CAD, which is our student newspaper. Um, and again, uh, feel free, all the students, please share your experiences. Just go in depth on what you do um, so prospective students can ask questions on those as well. Uh, you know, I'm on the Facebook Live, but so, so many students at Westminster have so much to offer. Um, and so I hope I can be representative of what other people are doing. But um, I've seen athletics firsthand. I know a lot of you in the chat are athletes right now coming to Westminster. Um, I'm not an athlete myself, but like I said, when I was doing broadcasting, I got to be a part of the athletic department and meet a lot of those people. Um, and it's a real family environment. Um, that's true for athletics. That's true for the entire campus. Um, the thing about Westminster, the reason I came and the reason why I'm staying uh, and very confident about that is uh, it's a real family environment. Everybody there genuinely cares about you. Um, this is a place unlike a larger university where you're walking around the quad, you're probably going to know 80% of the people and all of those people are going to say hi to you. Um, that's what I love the most. You can go. We, they had questions earlier, um, I think, in Dean Vance's segment about can I talk to financial aid about getting a plan for myself? Can I talk to this person? The answer for that is pretty much always yes. Um, accessibility is one of the best parts of Westminster as well. Um, you can go to financial aid and they'll sit you down and they'll help you understand uh, what is a subsidized versus an unsubsidized loan. Um, you can talk to the registrar about your schedule, your advisor about maybe you want a new major or maybe you want to take some different classes. Can you do that? Um, and accessibility with your professors is another really important thing. Um, because we, we have office hours. Um, all the faculty members have a certain set of office hours every single week um, where you can go and if you're struggling with something or if you have questions uh, or if you just want to talk about something maybe career-wise, you can sit down with these people and, uh, and really get that personalized experience from your professors. Um, if anybody has questions on anything so far, uh, let's see. Kristen says, my daughter's very nervous about being away from home and in another state. Is it difficult to get used to? Well, like I said, um, I wasn't in a different state because I'm, you know, I'm in the same zip code essentially as the college. But a lot of my friends were, and uh, I did live on campus. I've lived on campus two out of my four semesters. Um, it's an adjustment, yeah, it's an adjustment. But I wouldn't say it's difficult to get used to. I know that a lot of students struggle in those first, you know, couple weeks uh, with things. But we do everything we can with our first year orientation program for that first weekend. Um, that you'll be on campus uh, to get you acclimated to things, get you where you need to be. Um, and then just throughout the year, we have our Westminster 101 curriculum, which is a one credit class that every student has to take uh, their first year uh, to go forward at Westminster, where you learn about what, how Westminster operates. You learn about being in college in general. And uh, new last year, we added a peer success coach program where one of the orientation leaders from this student's orientation group 
follow them through the class for the whole year. So they really get to know them and they get to share their own experience uh, with that group of first year students. I had the opportunity to do that this last year and I think it was super advantageous for all the first year students to get someone that um, you know, had been through it a little bit and, uh, and share their own experience. Um, so there are a lot of things we do to make sure that people are comfortable with that adjustment because we have so many people coming from out of town, out of state. I saw Jace asked a question, what did he say? What activities are there to do on the weekend? Um, first and foremost, uh, our campus programming council, CPC, puts on a lot of events um, and that's throughout the weekend, on the weekend as well. Um, there's bingo, I think is the most famous one uh, that people go to. There are always prizes for bingo. Um, and that's, that's literally what their club is dedicated to, is programming on campus. Um, they'll put on different social events, different socials and things. Um, all the organizations put on things like, uh, for example, like our Black Student Union will put on the Ebony Ball every year, and that's a great event uh, to promote diversity and inclusion. Um, there's a lot to do campus programming-wise on the weekends. Um, and social life on campus is something that uh, I've found to be... Um, something that I really enjoy. I feed off of social activity. That's why it's really nice to see these numbers going up. We have over 120 people in the chat. Um, uh, but I think the social community at Westminster, it's one that's really tight knit. Um, to answer your question, Jace, let's see. Um, George helping out in the chat, please read what he has to say. He's a, a senior student here at Westminster who has a lot of experience. So George Hunt's like a guy to listen to. You're from Maine, which is about a 12 hour drive to Westminster. And you're guess you're, you guess you're nervous about having to get home for the holidays, et cetera. Yeah, I, I, I would, you know, I would be um, intimidated by that 12 hour drive personally, but I wouldn't be too intimidated about it. I know our residence life uh, staff is really helpful with move in and move out and those kind of things, making sure that you know what dates you can and can't be on campus. Um, and I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, in the comments, um, but there, if you need certain arrangements to be made about staying in the dorms, you can talk to the residence life staff and student affairs um, about getting that set up um, so that you don't have to be burdened in that way um, so that you know we can help you out in every way possible. Um, you, you're not going to have to move out over fall break. Um, you're, the only time you really have to move out uh, you know, over the normal course of the semester, obviously things are different right now. Uh, to answer your question, Katie, is... Um, over winter break and over summer break. And even then there, there are certain exceptions that can be made. So talk to Residence Life about that for more information. Uh, let's see. How do you get a hold of financial aid to talk about loans? Um, that's really easy, um, easier than I thought it was because I have no, I, I'm not financially literate. Um, and I know my family struggles with that a little bit. Um, but earlier we put the link in, if someone could put the email in as well, it's, uh, Fin aid, F I N aid at westminster.edu. Um, for any of your uh, financial aid questions, whether that's loans or scholarships, um, how you can make Westminster more affordable for you. Uh, what I've learned is Westminster wants you to be here uh, more than anything. They don't just want your money, they want you to be on this campus. Um, that's my experience, and that's what other people have said as well. Um, so they're going to work with you on getting you the most affordable education that they possibly can. Uh, it's a super genuine process and they'll have, they'll be able to answer any of your questions. So FIN aid at westminster.edu, um, some great resources there. And when we're back into regular office hours of being on campus, you can call them as well. Uh, right now though, stick to that email. Derek said, who won student of the year 2019? That was Jace Armantrout, but it was a close race with Garvey Biggers. Um, hi, Troy Jackson. Let's see, uh, Cheryl Gerber put the things in there. Um, hi Jack, it's Minch, you don't have a Facebook one. Just, thanks everybody for saying hi. Really appreciate it, that's why I love Westminster. Um, yeah, of course, Ethan. If anybody else has questions, um, let's see, Josie talking about sports functions going on. Um, I'll read Sam's comment. Best piece of advice my mom gave me is not to sit in your room the entire day Go out to different events because you never know what you will find. Yes. Yes, exactly. Uh, you, you said that perfectly, Sam. And that's so important for your first year on campus. Um, go out and get involved. You'll find things to do. Go to the activities fair. I can't stress that enough. We have uh, the first week on campus. Um, all the campus organizations, all 80, like Dean Vance was saying, uh, 
go out onto the quad. They have their own tables where you can sign up for things. You can learn more about the organization. So you're more in the know about it uh, right off the bat. Um, there's really not a divide. And I think maybe there used to be. And so maybe parents have experienced uh, when they were in college that first years or freshmen were, you know, almost separated from the rest of the student body. That's not the case here. Um, I can speak from personal experience, but I see now this year's first year class uh, is already such an important moving part um, in the grand campus machine. Uh, people get involved right away. So uh, like Sam is saying, get out of your bed, go enjoy things, go get involved. Uh, let's see here, any questions coming in? Jay says it wasn't close. Uh, we had a student of the year competition on social media. Jace won and he's still riding that wave. Uh, any idea when the campus store will be open? Um, well, with, with campus being essentially closed right now uh, due to the COVID-19 situation, not right now. Um, I believe you can still look online uh, at the campus store uh, offerings as far as the gift shop and the bookstore. Um, when campus is you know, alive and in session, uh, in person, uh, I believe the hours, it's somewhere in the morning, I don't get up early enough, I don't think to be there before it opens. Uh, but I think it closes around five, sometimes around four. Uh, so most of the day that people are in McKelvey Campus Center in the tub, uh, the campus store is open and you can go get, I mean, all your merch in there, all your clothes, things like that. Um, but there's also the bookstore, of course, which um, if you've been in any campus bookstore, if you've been in ours before, um, you know, it's, you know, your binders, your paper, your chargers, things like that, uh, and your candy. That's your cheapest snack place on campus is the campus bookstore. That's my pro tip. Uh, let's see. Who won Professor of the Year, says Pete Smith. Oh, you guys. Pete Smith won Professor of the Year. I think. Maybe it was Brad Weaver. In Can I, uh, I don't know. I think they all could have won. Okay. Let's see here. Thanks, Jason Hess. Grace McGinnis, high school friend in the chat. Bookstore links coming in. Um, let me see. Let me talk about kind of my experience, um, think about other clubs I've been involved in. Uh, last year I was pretty heavily involved in the Speech and Debate Society, um, which is a, a, a great organization. The advisor for that is the first gentleman of the college, uh, President Richardson's husband, Dr. Randy Richardson. Um, we got to go to uh, Bowling Green State University for a national uh, championship, several of us placed. Um, and so that was a great experience and that's something that, I mean, public speaking is so important. I was able to do that as a first year student. I know a lot of first years this year are involved with that. Um, we were talking earlier, um, the first time I was on, just kind of introduced the Facebook Live about things that you wanted to get involved in on campus. Uh, if anybody wasn't here for that or you want to reiterate that, uh, go ahead and drop that in. Andrew Henley, a Westminster alum, says, what's your favorite story about a prof, a professor that I had? Hmm. It would almost have to be a Randy Richardson story, uh, who I've had for two classes. I had him for... Uh, let's see, for inquiry, which every Westminster first year student will have. Uh, and that was one of my favorite classes. Um, and I had him for oral interpretation of literature. Oh, gosh. Let me think on that, Henley. Let me think on that. I will get back to that. But I, I wasn't ready for that one, but let me get back. Justin Wilson is in here, another alum, DJ Big Will. Uh, he was involved with the radio station. That's something that you can get involved in uh, on campus really easily. Um, let's see, Jess Schellenberger. Can I share a great experience in one of my classes? Yes, um, I absolutely can. Um, let's see, uh, that oral interpretation class was great. Um, this wasn't a class that I was in, but it was an opportunity that uh, I wasn't able to go to because of scheduling conflicts. But in the broadcasting major, there was a, uh, a, a video production class that got to go to the taping of College Game Day uh, for ESPN in Columbus for an Ohio State game. They got to see right up close the College Game Day crew um, and get involved with that. Uh, I've had chances to go, uh, again, with broadcasting to different news stations. And I know that uh, right now, for there's always, you know, trips and things like that that classes can get people involved in. Um, I'll talk about my classes in a second, too. Let me address this question. Uh, how easy is it to find your classes around campus? Uh, I'm assuming you mean as, as in getting to the buildings um, from one to another. But if you mean as far as, like, uh, like finding them to register for, um, let me know. But... Uh, Campus is small as far as where you'll need to be for class. Um, in the grand scheme of things, the, the size of our campus is actually large with the lake and the bio trails and the campus woods and everything. Uh, but you'll be able to adjust really well for that. And uh, what I'll mention as an orientation leader, every year we do uh, a campus tour um, 
for every orientation group where you as a first year student will pull up your phone or pull up whatever you have with your schedule of classes. It'll say where it is and we're gonna take you to every single one of those rooms on campus uh, so that you have an idea of where to go so you're not stressed on the first day. Uh, that was something that was really helpful for me. Even being from here and knowing some of the campus buildings, I didn't know where the rooms were. We're gonna make sure that you know that before you go to your first class. Uh, you'll get the hang of it super easy and soon you're gonna be worrying about the fastest way to get from point A to point B and not about where point B is. Um, so if that answers your question, uh, that's good. George reiterating pretty much what I said. Um, let's see here. Gina Vance talking about worship services. Some, go ahead and read that, something. Another thing that's really easy to get involved in. Um, let me go through a list of some of the, the best classes I've had. Um, I mentioned Inquiry, which is uh, Intro to the Liberal Arts, a uh, required class for all Westminster students. Um, and those required classes, I think uh, a lot of times people are like, ah, I just have to do it, I have to get through it. And you know, that's true. Um, but you know, having a certain attitude about it uh, can make the class really enjoyable. And for me, that was the case. Uh, we learned a lot about, you know, communication history and, um, you know, ancient Greece, which was strange, but tying that back to the liberal arts experience at Westminster was really important. Um, and had a great professor for that as well, Dr. Randy Richardson. Um, let's see, other great classes I've had. I think the most interesting class uh, that I've had hands down was with Dr. Jeff Brissett, who was shouting me out in the last comments. Appreciate that, Dr. Brissett. Uh, it was a genres film studies class about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So basically we watched all 21 at the time uh, Marvel movies and from a film studies lens. And so that was a really great hands-on class uh, in Mueller Theater, which is our lecture hall in McKelvey Campus Center um, with a big screen, which is great for film studies majors like myself. Um, and so I'd say that was the most interesting class I've had. Uh, let's see, Destiny. So if you're in a fellows, your inquiry class will be based on that. Uh, not necessarily. So um, what what uh, I was talking about in my inquiry class is going to be different from everybody else's class my year. Um, every professor teaches it differently. And uh, please read Lauren's comment right there about the uh, fellows programs. I wasn't a part of that, but I know that those are different experiences. So uh, those of you that can speak to that, uh, please do that in the comments. But I do know that those are all their own uh, different experiences. That's why there are different categories for them. Thank you, Katie, for the link to the spiritual life. Um, one class I want to touch on too, and this kind of goes back to cluster courses, which are a requirement for Westminster. Um, it's called Tweet Speak. I know Jace is in the chat right now and he is in that class right now. Um, it's a cluster class between a birding environmental science class and a social media video production class. And so they're doing social media video about birds. And uh, for both environmental science people and for broadcasting people or people that just wanna get involved with that, that's a super interesting class. Um, are there other questions about um, you know, how classes work, how, any more about campus dining, um, getting involved on campus. Let's see, I'll go back and see if there are any questions I've missed. If there's something that you asked that I haven't gotten to, uh, please ask it again. Our, Brian says, are professors accessible if you need some extra help? Absolutely. Uh, we touched on office hours earlier. Uh, I, I've had video chats with my professors over the last couple of days, just individually, because I haven't had the chance to meet with them. Uh, they're 100% accessible, whether it's through an email, even a text, a call sometimes. Um, that's, I think, the number one. Uh, and I'll, I'll praise Westminster in a lot of different ways. Um, but I think that's the number one thing that sets Westminster apart for me, is the accessibility of our faculty and our staff. Um, the fact that they're there for you and they're really here to make this experience the best it can be for you. Um, and that's super, it's a super authentic experience. I know when I was making my decision I remember you can kind of see through the college admissions shtick that is, please just come here. We need our numbers up. And, you know, that's true. And that, that's the truth of college admissions, right? But I, I remember thinking that this is a, such a real process and this is such a human process. And that's true when you're at Westminster. That's true when you're sophomore, junior, senior year. So let's see anything else. Um, your daughter is going into that major. Um, which major is that? Environmental science? 
That's awesome. I think I believe that's a new major as well, which is really exciting. And I have some friends in that right now who are really enjoying it. How's the weather at Westminster? Um, that depends on where you're from, asking that question, Claire. Um, the weather in Western Pennsylvania is notoriously a wild card. Um, we could have a 65 degree day, um, which we've had this week, but we could also have it pouring down rain in 40 the next day. And then the next day there could be snow and ice on the ground. And then two days after that, it might be 75 again. So it's, it is a wild card. We do get snow in the winter. Um, you know, we have, uh, I wouldn't say it's a harsh winter, but I would say it's, we have seasons. So if you're from Southern California, uh, that's going to be an adjustment for you. And, um, I mean, there are some resources. So for example, uh, public safety on campus will help you scrape off your car if you need to, if you don't have that resource, um, uh, things like that. Let me see, but it's Western Pennsylvania weather. Let's see. How do you decide on Westminster among any other schools you were considering? Okay, cool. I'll talk about my decision process in high school. Um, so in high school, I think, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, I wasn't like the greatest student, um, uh, just middle of the line. And, you know, I didn't apply a ton of places, but um, I applied to several um, around the area for the most part. Um, and I didn't intend, when I applied for Westminster, it wasn't really with the intention of, well, I'm just going to go here because it's down the street, or I'm just going to go here because this is what will be easiest for me. Um, it's one of the few schools that really intrigued me. And it, it wasn't first on my list when I started. Um, I won't mention the other schools I applied for, but um, I do remember getting that financial aid package back from Westminster really surprised me um, because it showed me that this education is way more affordable than I realized and more affordable than some of the public schools that uh, I had applied to, some of the state schools. So that was one big thing, but just talking to people on campus um, and seeing that there's this whole new community that I wasn't even aware of from down the street um, that's so rich and with so many helpful people all around, uh, that was the number one thing. I mean, I was intrigued by the major, but even then I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do with it, and I did end up changing that. Uh, but it's it's the people, and I think any students will tell you that. Students in the comments, current students, please uh, answer that question as well. How did you decide uh, on Westminster when you were a high school senior? Um, and how is that still true today while you are, you know, uh, maybe a, a sophomore or up? Um, let's see. Tweet speak on Instagram. Justin Wilson, it's the snow belt. Pretty much. It's not quite eerie, Pennsylvania, but... Awesome. Great to see you guys helping out in the comments. Yeah, it's storming and cool today. There's supposed to be a lo lower 70s and sunny tomorrow to give you an idea. I'm looking out my window and it's literally pouring down rain, but I guarantee the sun will be shining in like a couple hours. Um, let's see here. Yeah, jo I actually, one thing about that decision process, and Justin Wilson put this in the comments, I had the luxury of going over to campus and talking to students. Um, and I went, I, I just Instagram messaged Justin Wilson and I went over and I talked to him. I completely forgot about that, Justin. And I sat down and I talked with him about the major, about broadcasting, about Westminster. Um, so right now you can't really do that. This is a time where we can't go to campus and you can't meet with us. But that being said, reach out to us. Um, personally, I mean, send me a friend request on Facebook, but uh, at the same time, reach out to Westminster on social media. Join that Facebook group for the class of 2024. That's going to be really helpful for you. Um, there's nothing we love more than answering your questions. That's why we're all here today. Um, so just let us know if you have any questions. Oh, man. Should you buy your kiddo snow boots? That's not a ridiculous question. You sh uh, If you can, you should. Um, I would say if that's something that if you can't go out in the snow without snow boots, then yes. Uh, I, I don't have them. I just kind of wear an old bratty pair of sneakers, but we will have snow for uh, a good part of the year. Um, and the sidewalks are always nice and paved and salted and things, so th that's not much of an issue, but you're going to encounter snow at Westminster. Um, let's see. Is there a difference between the majors? I think you're talking about environmental studies still. Um, someone with that expertise, Dean Coker. Talk about that. I might be behind on these questions. Sorry, I'm, scro I'm scrolling through. Uh, what advice would you tell your first year self coming into college for the first time? Uh, I, I would tell Jack Carson as a first year student at Westminster to calm down. Uh, we were talking, I saw some questions earlier. 
that are really great questions. And, but they're things that as a current student, I think, oh, well, that's so simple now. And I was worried about a lot of those same things about loans and about uh, how am I going to register for classes and am I going to get lost on campus and things like that. Um, I would tell myself to relax because it's kind of like when you're in a class and you're raising your hand and your teacher waits to call on you because he or she is going to answer that question eventually anyway. So what's the point in asking? It's kind of that same situation where you'll see that Westminster is here to help you and they're here to make sure that you have an okay experience. So keep asking those questions. But if you're really worried about those things, relax a little bit. We're going to help you out. Let's see. Scrolling through. Um, hopefully I haven't missed any questions. Um, as far as time, it's, it's, it's almost new now. So I think uh, soon here we're going to wrap it up. Uh, please hit, you know, hit the comments with any more questions you have. Um, for me, either I can answer them with my experience or we can direct you to someone who has uh, more expertise on that. Uh, but again, thank you guys so much for, for joining us today. Still over 100 people uh, here in the live stream. Uh, Zach says, what meal plan would you suggest? And I mean, that, de that depends on your situation. So we do have a different uh, selection of meal plans. And uh, someone from maybe Student Affairs could touch on this in the comments specifically. Um, I believe that the standard that every first year comes in with that has a meal plan is the Titan 10, where you get 10 swipes a week. Uh, 10 Galbraith dining meals a week and a certain amount of um, dine dollars, which you can use in the tub or you can use a Galbraith dining. Um, I had that. I switched to the Titan 5 because I didn't go to Galbraith as much as I thought. Um, and then this past year, I switched to an all dine dollars meal plan. I don't think there's a right answer to that question. I would say maybe come in with that standard one, with that standard Titan 10, see where you eat the most and then kind of readjust to that because there'll be a period where you can, uh, before a certain deadline where you can change your meal plan after you get to Westminster. Uh, so go ahead and do that. Um, it, it's gonna probably change. And then if you eventually decide to live in the Berlin village, uh, there's an, a meal plan for that. If you're a commuter, there's a commuter meal plan option that you could get uh, while I've commuted. That's something that I've found to be a great option and get me to stay on campus. If you have commuter questions too, uh, I've done that for two semesters. Uh, please let me know. Um, I can help you with that too. A couple things to remind you though, and this is th the most important part. Uh, first of all, submit your deposit as soon as possible. Uh, when you leave this live stream, go ahead and just go to the deposit page uh, on westminster.edu. There's a deposit button right at the top. Um, get that done as soon as you can so you can go forward with the process. Um, join the Westminster PA Class of 2024 Facebook page. It's a way for you to connect with other prospective, or not other prospective students, but other incoming students, that is. Um, tell a little bit about yourself, learn about what's going on on campus now, what you'll have next year, um, and connect with professors and current students and things like that. The, the Facebook page is something you need to do. Um, something that I found really helpful. And third, if you have any more questions, I'll say this one more time, email or text your admissions counselors they're there to help you in every way possible. I'm sure a lot of you, if not all of you, have been connected with those people. Um, it's a great resource. That's what they're there for. They're literally there to help you out through this process. So take advantage of that uh, as much as you can. I had great help from my admissions counselors. Um, Derek is saying in the comments, the skinny on West Mini is a great way to stay up on what's happening on campus too. Uh, when we're back on campus, that's a show that comes out you know, every Friday on our Instagram. So you can go back uh, on Westminster PA on Instagram and maybe watch the old skinnies. But yeah, watch all our social media shows. We're at Westminster PA on everything. Uh, so that's, that's uh, a great resource for current and incoming students as well. Uh, I am going to wrap it up. Let us know if you have any more questions, please. But thank you more than that uh, for joining us on this interesting new Titan Day. I'm really happy about how it went. I think uh, a lot of people are. Uh, it's a shame we couldn't be on campus, but I'm really glad that maybe some of those out-of-towners, some of those people from, you know, who have long drives could join us for this today. Uh, so thanks for joining us. We hope to talk to you again soon. Uh, and of course, go Titans. Thanks, guys.